So in my practice, when I come across a client that struggles with unresolved anger, resentment, or ruminating thoughts, particularly those that show up in the early evening, and they tend to turn all of that anger and frustration inward, Field Maple is one of the extracts that comes to my mind to help stabilize those emotions and sweeten that feeling towards oneself. Although this extract has many uses, which we're going to talk to you today, it's restoring that smooth flow of kindness that I personally associate with this extract. I'm Lauren Hubele. I'm a health coach and I'm a gymotherapy expert. And I'd like to welcome my co-host, um, herbalist, Terry Brooks. Hi, Terry. Glad you're here hi, today. Hi, hi, Lauren and Megan, everyone else. I have to say I'm rejoicing a little bit today because I just read a news article saying that the Australian firefighters have saved the only known stand of a particular prehistoric, the Wolemi pine trees that grow only in Australia. And it sounds like they had a military-like expedition out there to try and save these plants. So I'm excited about that today. I love that. Great news. Good to have you here, Terry. And, and Megan Lim, acupuncturist. Megan, good to have you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lauren and Terry. It's great to be with you all. And thanks to all of you who are tuning in. So today we're going to start with field maple as a tree. And Terry, what can you tell us about that tree and how would we spot it in, in growing somewhere? Sure. Well, it's indigenous to Europe and, and moving eastward towards um, Asia, but it is called hedge maple. The scientific name or Latin is Acer campestris or Acer campestra. It is a medium sized tree growing about 30 to 50 feet tall, but it also grows shorter as a shrub and an understory of a forest. Mm -hmm. It's a fast grower and it grows in zones three to 10. So it's pretty adaptable and it's tolerant of many soil types. It, um, the bark is light gray. It grows in mixed forests or on the edges, hedges and so on. The bark is light gray, rather smooth, but the wood is very, very hard. It has shallow fissures up the, up the stem or the trunk of the tree. The leaves grow in opposite pairs. They're very bright green when they first emerge, but turning darker throughout the season. Um, in autumn, the foliage is a beautiful color, anywhere from red, yellow, oranges, and so on, over a long period of time. And the leaf comes out different than the maples that grow near me. The leaf has rounded lobes on it. So those in my area are all pointed and sharp looking. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen this tree in my area, but I could be wrong. <laughs> it's maybe out there. It will grow here. Uh, the flowers are small and yellowish green, and the flowering usually starts in April. The flowers coming out either um, at the same time or just before the leaves bud out. And they provide a lot of pollen. The honeybees love this tree. Uh, let's see, what else do I know about it? It's used in, in areas of high erosion issues. So the roots are significant in that they can stabilize slopes and mitigate the erosion. The fruits on this tree are noticeable from a distance. They're bright red, and it's, a, it's called a Samara, which is those little whirly birds that you see coming down from um, maples and elms. And they ripen in late September, dispersed by the wind throughout the rest of the year. I see maple leaves, maple Samaras rather, on top of the snow oftentimes, so they're still falling. This tree was planted along with elms in parts of Europe, as living props for grapevines, so that the grapevines could climb up. Uh, today, it's commonly planted in parks and gardens, on streets and roadsides because of the beautiful colors that it provides and the fact that it tolerates pollution very well. Wow, very interesting. Is, is there some historical um, folklores or history you'd like to share with us about this maple tree? Well, this tree is very interesting. It's pretty significant in Native American culture. So if you've tasted true American or true maple syrup, you've had the boiled down sap of this tree. It was a daily menu item for First Nations throughout millennia. 
The maple tree was of importance to many tribes of the Northwestern United States and Western Canada. And they are the ones who developed the art of processing the maple sap into syrup and candy and sugar and so on. Uh, some of the tribes say that this tree symbolizes positive thinking and the use of intuition. A tale among the Salto tribe, which is a branch of Ojibwe, tells a story of how the fiery fall colors of the maples saved grandmother Nanabuju, the creator, from the malevolent spirits of darkness. So you can imagine that those bright colors would save you from darkness for sure. The bark has been used in Native American medicine as, as well as many other parts um, for sore eyes, anti-cholesterol, and astringent action. And the syrup was also loved by pioneers because they did not have to brave those wild beehives and get stung to have a source of sweetness. So it was interesting to note that farm, farms at this um, in history of our country were often described by the number of taps as well as the acreage on the farm. So if you were to buy property, you might be interested in knowing how many maples there were to tap. The ash content of this wood is one of the highest of any wood. It's called black gold in American history. And many people made a fortune felling maple forests to produce charcoal and exported it back to England because at that time, Victorian England was what had large glass factories and rag industries and they needed it also for gunpowder production. At some point, and I, I'm not sure of the history of this, but it became illegal to sell this charcoal here in the States. And even then it was smuggled to Canada, which was then transported to, to um, Europe again, Ma mainly England, I think. So it's said that you can still see these vast ash houses in parts of Canada and on the largest states in England. The hardwood is also used in furniture, obviously, flooring, Many musical instruments are made from maple, as well as paddles, oars, and basketry. In ancient history, it was thought it could be bad luck because they think that this was the tree that the Trojan horse was made from mm -hmm. that allowed the Greeks to enter and sack the city of Troy. And in parts of Europe, there's always superstitions going along with trees, aren't there? So they have things like if you if you hung this branch in the in the doorway, it would prevent bats from coming in your house. I think almost any branch would do that, <laughs> maybe, I don't know for sure. <laughs> but um, it was also said it could remove all traces of witchcraft from young children. And in the Alps, they were eating, and they currently eat leaves of this, of this plant in their salads. I'm sure it's very young leaves, so they're not very bitter, as a sort of preventative medicine. Old astrology says that maple is ruled by Jupiter and it brings expansive happy energy to any situation. So it'll be interesting to see how you can correlate that with what you know about the Gemmo. Yeah, absolutely. Already making connections. Yeah. What about the medicinal purposes of the plant itself? From your background, Terry, what do you see? Most of these trees are getting a lot of attention currently, and the recent research in, of this tree shows that the medicine is highly effective for rheumatism, bruises, liver disorders, eye disease, pain, and in um, detoxifying the body. Preliminary studies have shown the extracts and the compounds isolated from them, from this genus, not necessarily just the field maple, but from all maple genus, um, shows biological activities like antioxidant, anti-tumor, reduces inflammation, anti-diabetic, protects the liver, and may also help with an anti-obesity anti <laughs> action. That's a tricky word. Um, and, the, and also that it promotes bone growth. So the osteoblast cells. Mm -hmm. Again, the Native Americans have used it in many ways. I'm just trying to think of links that may, you know, come bring this all together. And I'm thinking because this has such hard wood, is there some indication that that also pertains to the hard things that develop in our body, the hardness, the development of stones, for example, kidney or bladder stones, um, gallbladder stones. And I'm also thinking that the tail of this this tree 
um, protecting and protecting from the spirits of darkness suggests maybe this has some use in negative emotional states. Yeah, and it does. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Thank you, Terry. Thanks sure. for all your wisdom. So the gemotherapy extract from field maple is coming from the bud. And this primary action of this extract is on the liver and exactly on the work of the liver where cholesterol synthesized and gall is produced. It ensures that the gall is thin and passes easily into the gallbladder. And that action alone is what decreases the risk of gallstones producing. So that connects directly with what you were saying there, Terry. The secondary action is all the gallbladder itself, where there it works as a harmonizer. And it's going to rejuvenate the gallbladder and resolve any inflammation there. So anyone that's been diagnosed with any gallbladder issues, field maple would definitely want to be on your list to consider. The, the action of field maple in the gallbladder is to clear any blockages caused by this thickening. And it's that thickening that creates stones. And unlike kidney stones, there's no place that is optimal for them to get out. And so we get this incredible discomfort from them. And so the, the way around this besides changing your diet so you're not creating these stones and needing to process these heavy fats is to work with an extract such as field maple to tonify and harmonize those functions. So when I look at field maple and who might consider it, it would be any male or female adult. It um, could be children who have experienced medications in utero or in early childhood that may cause some congestion in their liver. And that would have been unheard of one, one, two generations ago, but now it's absolutely prevalent. Anyone that can, has um, a history of consuming or currently consumes high fat foods, um, highly processed foods that could inhibit liver function, um, anyone that has sleep challenges from 11 to 3 p.m. could benefit from field maple. So this typically for adults refers to those people that can't get to sleep. They're, they're ready to, but they can't fall asleep till after 1, 2, or 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, and anyone that has a history of consuming medications or substances um, that could block the liver and cause some congestion there. So for acute uses, I use field maple for anything that has to do with the gallbladder or any costal nerve pain. It is um, an excellent remedy for supporting, um, in particular, those with the virus Epstein-Barr and helping raise their um, immune, system, uh, immune potential and strengthen them. In microdoses for the nervous system, at the start of working with a case, we use field maple to harmonize the peripheral nervous system, which is really, we're pointing at the autonomic nervous system there. It, and what it's really good at stabilizing mood, resolving angry, irritable states, or any of those that um, affect sleep. And then finally, chronic cases. So later on in someone's protocol, supporting the gallbladder in cases of fatty liver, anyone that has um, um, neurological pains in their face and, and in the breastbone area um, that covers the heart. So those are the particular uses that Field Maple has proven to be quite successful in um, resolving or treating. And I'm really curious how you're going to tie this in, Megan, through the Asian medicine lens. Yeah, I think we're all on the same page today about this. <clears throat> Terry, uh, I loved what you said. And Lauren, I loved what you said about smooth flow of kindness, because smooth flow is a big part of how this extract works. And Terry, what you said about sap, I, I feel like this really ensures the smooth flow of our inner sap in a way as humans. 
This is an extract that moves qi, like many of our extracts do, and it moves qi, and so it assists in the movement of blood and fluids in the body, helping the body to more effectively clean itself and to remove its waste. So if we look at what it does, we know that it ensures that the gall is thin and that it passes easily into the gallbladder. So again, smooth movement and thinning of fluids. And we know that it clears blockages due to the blocking of gall and the adhering of cholesterol. So it's supporting the liver and gallbladder by keeping the fluids thin and moving. So if we back up and remember that from an Asian medical lens, all life is a manifestation of qi, and the nature of qi is movement, then we know that if we keep fluids moving, the body can more easily clear them out. The body is constantly trying to clean itself effectively. The problems arise in the body when the fluids congeal or they thicken and they become stagnant and lodged. So when this happens and fluid metabolism is compromised, the body is asking for help in the liver gallbladder and spleen stomach areas. And we're not talking about necessarily the organs, although there is some organ involvement. We're talking about the energetic systems of liver gallbladder and stomach and spleen. So we've talked about this before, how the body produces our chi from two different methods. We have our postnatal chi, which is produced from our food and fluid and breath. And that, that's the spleen, uh, sorry, the chi that's constantly refreshing itself all of the time. Every time we take food and fluid and air in, the spleen energy, the stomach spleen energy is working hard and is the central meridian in that constant refreshing process of our energy. Spleen takes the food chi and it raises it up to the lung and then the lung spreads it out to the rest of the body. So healthy spleen and stomach energy, our digestive energy, is essential because it oversees what we call the transforming and transporting functions in the body. So good digestion, healthy appetite, good absorption, and regular bowel movements are all functions of a healthy spleen chi. That's what we're going to see when our spleen chi is healthy. When transformation and transportation functions aren't working as well, we're going to see fluids congeal and accumulate. The movement of our chi is going to slow, and therefore all the fluids in the body will slow a little and dampness and phlegm begin to form. So when we talk about congealing fluids in relationship to cholesterol and the liver gallbladder, we're going to see buildup in the arteries. Now, in Asian medicine, cholesterol is not a dysfunction on its own. It's a dysfunction of the metabolic pathway. Mm -hmm. So cholesterol is viewed as a form of congealed fluid or a form of phlegm. And its problem is only created because it stagnates and it starts to cause blockage and flow. Interestingly, the acupuncture point that has been used in studies and shown to effectively lower LDL and total cholesterol is a point related to the stomach spleen meridian, and it's used for damp and phlegm and fluid stagnation. So what we're seeing is that weak digestion can we lead to a weakened blood and fluid flow, and those two are very related. So we know that the nature of our spleen energy then is to transform and transport. And this leads us beautifully, Lauren, into what you said about uh, smooth flow. So the nature of liver is to spread and to ensure smooth movement, smooth movement of chi, smooth movement of blood, fluids, and emotion. So our body and our, our blood and our body fluids are a dense form of chi. And the spreading function helps to regulate this movement of the chi. They say if liver chi is flowing, the blood vessels will remain open and unobstructed. We know that liver controls smooth flow of chi and emotions. And so on the other side of that, when our smooth flow is interrupted, we're gonna see a pattern really common in our culture. It's what uh, Japanese and Chinese medicine calls liver chi stagnation. And this has to do with a feeling of stuckness. Sometimes I describe it as the feeling of swimming against the current. Some days we just feel like we're swimming against the current. And this is why typically words like anger and mild depression and frustration are used to describe this pattern of liver chi stagnation. When this manifests, this pattern manifests in the body, we might also see some pain and fullness in the abdomen, 
particularly the upper abdomen. Sometimes a feeling of um, stuckness or oppression in the chest and a lump in the throat. People often come to me with this pattern and tell me that they always feel like there's something caught in their throat. Hmm. Liver is associated in the elements with the element of wood. And we know that liver controls the nourishment of the muscles and tendons with blood. So when liver needs support, we also might see some neck pain or some tightness in the tendons, ligaments, and sinews. Just that general feeling of not moving freely. We might see muscle contraction, sometimes some spasms and cramps with that. So it's easy to see how field maple supports the cleaning and clearing of blockages by resolving inflammation when we combine spleen's function of transporting and transforming and support that with liver's function of spreading and the smooth flow. Wow, so going with the flow, that sounds like going the with the flow. this. Absolutely. That's a good message. Yeah, 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 beautiful. Yeah, I'm thinking of people that have done so well on Field Maple, and you can actually see that once they start talking, this ease in them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Ladies, lots of wonderful information. So if someone wanted some more information on trees, Terry, where would they go? So many places. You know, there's a website, and I wish I had it all pulled up here. Um, I think it's British Trust Woodland. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, dot UK. But I, if you get that much in, you'll find a lot of really awesome information about the trees of Britain. Yeah. Yeah. I've loved that site. It's a wonderful resource. Yeah. Very specific about things and lots of information. Okay. Great. And Megan, if someone's looking for more information on Asian medicine. Uh, there's a great book that describes the theory behind traditional Chinese medicine, and that is called The Web that has no weaver. If you're interested in my practice, uh, acupuncture, Japanese acupuncture, gemotherapy from an Asian lens, you can visit my website at acculemp.com. Beautiful. And if you'd like to learn more about gemotherapy, I visit my website, lauren at laurenhubelay.com, and you'll find resources on my blog as well as links to purchase my books or um, Perhaps you'd like to dig a little deeper and join us for a class. So thanks, everyone. Appreciate all that wonderful information on Field Maple.